Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Check out these headlines we have for you here. We have Franklin Templeton CEO Jamie Dimon and Brad Garlinghouse sets the record straight, ladies and gentlemen. The SEC versus Coinbase and the SEC versus Binance today. We've got all the details you're going to want. And there's an absolute crypto bloodbath going on in the market right now. And U.S. governments are tracking private transactions. What do you think they'll do with a CBDC? Oh, we're going to take it all on. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, it is a bloodbath for crypto at $1.69 trillion market cap. We're off by 3.5%, but look at the numbers now. 40700 plus for Bitcoin, off by 4% in the 24, 82 off on the 7-day. 2400 plus for Ethereum right now, off by 2.4 in a 24-hour, but it's off by 7.1 on the 7-day. Tether market cap's $94.7 billion. Coming down here right now, looking at Solana, the number 5 spot, off by 7.4% in the 24-hour, 5.2 in the 7-day. We look at uh, XRP at the number six spot here. We're off by four and a half in the 24 hour and off by 8.6 on the seven day at 53 cents now. Oh, it's falling like a manhole cover from the sky, but it's the whole market. It's not just XRP. Keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. So we are ranging right now uh, between 53 cents and 56 cents. You can see the recent fall has happened really within the last hour or so here. And we are looking right now at the 53.58 mark, which is where we are and falling. But you know what? I'm not concerned. I'm excited. You know why I'm excited? Take a listen to this. This is from the New York proper party that we went to. Brad Garlinghouse on stage. Take a listen. All right, another person who deserves a, a quick shout out. I mean, again, you guys know who this is. He, he goes by Joel Katz. Yeah. Wow. David Shorts. He is the man, the man, the legend. We love this guy. He's here somewhere. I don't know where he is. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Tracy, for letting him come. All right, the last thing I want to say is it's, it's not often that we get this community together. Like, coming together for things like Apex, the XRP Las Vegas event, thank you, Brad Kimes, I don't know where you're going. Oh, thank you for doing that. Hey, thank you so much for saying it and acknowledging it and all the hard work that's gone into it. We certainly appreciate you, Brad, and Ripple. And you know what? You're going to be able to see David Schwartz on stage at XRP Las Vegas, the man, the myth, the legend, Perry Ann Boring from the Digital Chamber of Commerce, Honorable Christian Carlo, co-founder of the Digital Dollar Project, and yes, this just in, Simon McLaughlin, CEO of Uphold, Kevin Maloney, CEO of iTrust, it gets bigger, Eleanor Terrett, we know who that is, Fox News, we're going to fix that. So then we got Jeremy Hogan virtually. We got Ray Fuentes MC in this year. Robin O'Connell from Uphold. Nancy Beaton as well. I tell you, the list is going to get even bigger. Just you wait. But the tickets are being sold at a lightning pace right now. And don't forget, you even have a chance to break bread with Brad himself if you click on the Future of Digital Assets Benefit Dinner link. Get your ticket today. They sold a whole bunch yesterday. And that is limited seating for all of this. So do not play around and get your tickets. This is going to be an event to remember. No question about it. Link underneath the video. This is Franklin Templeton, CEO on Bitcoin. Let her say it. Let's hear it. You know, it's funny. I, um, I'm known for saying that Bitcoin's the greatest distraction from one of the greatest disruptions in financial services, which is blockchain. So a lot of people took that as I'm not a believer in Bitcoin. Uh, and yet, you know, it, launching this ETF, you can see, obviously, the demand that's out there uh, for Bitcoin. And I think there's a lot of reasons why that is. Uh, I think that one, from a blockchain standpoint, the ability to pay, Bitcoin's going to be a key component of that. 
uh, and the technology is going to open up a lot of really interesting types of investment opportunities. We actually uh, launched a tokenized uh, money market fund. We're the first uh, mutual fund to, or for, first traditional asset manager to actually launch a 40 act fund on a public blockchain on the Stellar blockchain. Wow. So Bitcoin is just one of the suite of what we think are opportunities here. Uh, and um, you know, one of the things that made me a believer is as I went around the world talking to people who would tell you, I, I had somebody who said, I keep 50% of my savings in Bitcoin because if I say the wrong thing in my country, I could have my assets confiscated. Uh, I remember talking to somebody in Israel who said, my parents and their parents had all of their assets confiscated. They keep a portion of it in Bitcoin. So there's a fear component to it um, that is considered almost a insurance or, or safety component. But I also think it's really important to fueling what is a, a next real opportunity in this blockchain world. Right. So, I mean, the, the scenarios that you just outlined, that's the case for holding Bitcoin, the actual, you know, you have the keys to the security as opposed to investing in an ETF. Right, so there's there's a use case for both. For sure, but that yeah. still keeps a floor on the sure. price, right? Yeah. So it keeps on the floor on the price. And then if you've actually tried to acquire and deal with the keys, it's really complicated, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, I did it at one point and then I was trying to actually figure out how to get back in and it's hard. And so being able to open it up and have access to that through an ETF and just simply through your brokerage account is... is it is, is an easy way for people who aren't familiar with this space to get into this space. So the Franklin Templeton CEO, Jenny Johnson here saying, look, I might have said that Bitcoin's a big distraction, but that doesn't mean I'm down on Bitcoin. And just as a reminder here, you know, the examples that she gave, I thought were the best examples to give. Uh, you're talking about a perspective when you don't live somewhere where your dollar is solid, right? and you are living somewhere where a government can simply just come in for no rhyme or reason, decide to seize your assets. It is quite scary. This is another reason to really think about what's going on with Bitcoin right now, just as well as knowing that the Satoshi issue, the release of the wallet, if all these things could happen, there's pros and cons to all of this. But if these ETFs continue to roll out, you're going to see other products like options introduced as well. I'm not going to play this whole clip, but I want you to hear a piece of this. Take a listen to this. Uh, shout out to British Hoddle for this clip and Chad Stein. 19 B4 applications for listing and the trading of options on commodities based uh, trust shares, which would be the Bitcoin ETFs. So they filed for this with the SEC and they've basically said that we want to start trading options on this. Now, what does that mean when you can trade options on, on, on a Bitcoin ETF? What does that actually mean for the asset? What does that mean for the asset holders? What does that mean for the type of buyer that's coming into the asset as a result of the options? Because the derivatives markets are orders of magnitudes higher and uh, sorry bigger than the underlying spot markets so as these uh options um gets get approved you'll be able to come in and write covered calls against your position you'll be able to come in and buy long calls against your position you'll be able to come in and speculate around the underlying asset and that is the point and there look it's quite obvious to me that they're going to roll that stuff out as an option too. And you have to start thinking about those other inflows of cash coming in from these other products. It's going to continue. And obviously Bitcoin's not the only one. There's going to be others to follow. Keep your eye out. This is going the, look, I, you know, I, I don't know if I've done a good enough job of, of expressing this, but I just want to say that, you know, Again, you know, I understand some pitfalls when it comes to Bitcoin. It's certainly not a payments token, but it is being moved into an investment speculative asset. If they decide to leave it there for a time or for good, whatever it ends up being, there will be a lot of money to flow into this thing. And I reported this morning in the first video over a billion dollars in just four days in inflows. That was just to BlackRock. <laughs> so you can see with all these others and then it will be more tokens coming out with these products as well this is going to be an exciting year we're not even out of january yet then take a look at this little fancy highlighted clip one of the best 45 second clips ever brad garlinghouse brings this home and lands the plane so on the bitcoin there are use cases aml 
fraud, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, sex trafficking. Those are real use cases, and you see it being used for hundreds, maybe 50, 100 billion dollars right. a year for that. My reaction to that is, uh, is terrorists and sex traffickers use cash. Uh, if you look on a percentage basis, uh, yeah. I, I'm not trying to say that any new yeah. technology, bad actors can use any new tool. That's bad right. actors will use AI. Bad actors will use crypto. Bad act I, I think there are a lot of very good actors in crypto who are doing the right thing. Ripple only works with regulated financial institutions. You can't have anonymous transactions using Ripple's technology. So you know, some of those things, I think, are good political talking points. They're not reality. Yeah. Such a great point. You know, to that point, you know, just to go one step further, you know, people use cars to rob banks when cars first started coming out. We didn't outlaw cars. <laughs> you know, this is the problem. You know, there's still this narrative, but obviously the narrative is having a negative impact on the market today. It's a crypto bloodbath. And you think that isn't to the benefit of these large institutions that are still rolling out here into these ETFs? Oh, give it time. Garling House stressed the benefits of joining forces. We're going to make sure that we can start talking about whether we can collaborate as well. And this was a quick clip that was shared, and it was showing basically right here. Harbarian, stop what you're doing. I've just had the honor of interviewing two great men you know from Ripple and Hedera. Shout out to Max Walker Williams for this. Uh, this is Lemon Baird from Hedera. And this is Brad Garlinghouse, as you know, and they sat down, talked, and they did exchange uh, a few words where they were saying, basically, yeah, we should try to find out a way that we could work together, you know. And I think that is an excellent conversation, and I'm super excited about that. And I want to personally invite XR, uh, Hedera right now to participate in XRP Las Vegas 2024. And if anybody out there knows a connection to them, you make sure you let them know and put them in touch with me. I'd love to speak to them. Now, with this, we need to remind ourselves, we know the SEC versus Coinbase case went on this week. I listened to all four plus hours of it. And there was a lot that went on in there. And inside of that, the SEC literally said this. The tokens themselves are not a security. Judge Falia says, well, that's what the folks at the back table think, which is where Coinbase was sitting. And they are wondering why we are here. Coinbase's stance was validated, leaving the courtroom buzzing. Do you believe crypto assets should be regulated as securities? No. I think the SEC should be sanctioned at this point because, to be perfectly honest, Judge Falia was very, very kind and generous. And for the first two hours, she absolutely grilled the SEC in their actions and their approach. And as far as I can tell, even though she didn't make a ruling on that day and she made it clear that she wouldn't because she appreciated the arguments from both sides and it would take some time. But my thought is, is that there was nothing from the SEC and the actions that were said in there that didn't show me that they were doing anything that they haven't been doing, which is acting in an arbitrary and capricious way in front of a judge, no matter what the case is. And I hope that Judge Falia comes back with that kind of delivery. We'll see. Meanwhile, this is what's going on here that we need to follow in the upcoming, right? And this isn't just for Ripple. Uh, this is Zakanoff versus Ripple. Remember, there's the SEC versus Ripple case. We still have the uh, institutional sales to be dealt with and remedied. And then we have the Zakanoff versus Ripple case motion to approve the form manner of class, which was on the 11th of this month, just a few days ago. But you know what I'm interested in here? How can that case continue to move forward knowing that secondary market sales, which is where Zakanoff bought the XRP, uh, are not securities? So how in the world can this guy even come back on this? I don't understand where this is going or how this Sackinoff versus Ripple case is still existing at this point. But nevertheless, we know we just had the Coinbase case, but today it's Binance's turn. And I'm wishing Binance all the success in their motion to dismiss as that is well underway at this point. You can dial in to listen to that case. I haven't been able to because of scheduling, but I will certainly try to bring you whatever statements and comments that come out of that and keep an eye out for 129 this month and another 10 days. We have Terraform Labs and Dow Kwan versus the SEC. That is coming. So then we have Sam Bankman fraud versus the United States sentencing hearing on March 28th. 
Keep your eye out, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot going on. And don't forget that while all of this is happening, the Supreme Court is really in a position where they have been putting government agencies like the SEC back in their own lane or the Environmental Protection Agency and letting them know that they are overstepping their jurisdictional bounds. And I hope that it doesn't come to that in these cases here in crypto, but it might. It just may. And the reality here is for me, as I look at this, I think how horrible it is that we're paying everybody in Congress right now to do nothing because they should be crafting legislation instead of allowing judges to do it case by case through legal precedent and then crafting the points for which they will do their legislation. They should put the legislation out. They should make it broad enough that it doesn't impact innovation. It's not hard to do. And let's face it. There are some great pieces of legislation out there that you could grab that are already put together. But you know what? That's not where we are. This is where we are. We can only hope that we continue to win the fight against the SEC. We have to keep working together to make sure we do that. Now, next steps. One of the other reasons we got to make sure we work really hard together to make sure we win the fights because we're going into the freedom zone. Because this day and age, it's a tabletop conversation that we have censorship actively on all social media platforms. You pick the name. And today we're going to go into a much darker understanding. What would it really be like? What would the U.S. really look like if it had a central bank digital currency? Because today in the Freedom Zone, I'm going to show you actual evidence of how the U.S. government's already being tracked for tracking our private transactions. And that's why we're headed into the Freedom Zone. I hope you'll join us. Go to digperspectives.com. Join us in the Freedom Zone for next to nothing. It's where the rest of this conversation goes because we know we can't really attack it and have this kind of conversation truthfully on a platform without some kind of censorship taking place. And it happened to me just a few days ago. It's very real and it's very active. And we're going into the freedom zone right now. I hope you'll join us at digital dig Join us in there. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the next one.